I think, in fact, the donor would be pestered quite a lot if the name came out before the actual transaction was made. Pestered by who? Well, by various art collectors, I would say. And so they have requested that we should keep it um, quiet as much as possible. It does uh, seem... Yes, he is. you could say that, yes. Well, you've seen the collection. What do you think of it? Oh, I think it's very good. Uh, it's paintings, drawings, etchings, and they're all by famous people. Have you anything here to compare with it? Well, I don't think so, really. No, not to compare with the, with the total collection as it is. Why has he decided to give it to Walsall and not any other town? Because the donor has very close associations with Walsall. Um, the family's got close associations with Walsall. Is he a Walsall-born man? I'll keep saying the donor if you don't mind. <laughs> Our security is already very good, but we are taking expert advice both from the West Midlands Arts Association and from the local police authorities on this uh, project, and I don't anticipate any difficulties there at all. How do you know that all these items are the genuine thing? Well, quite a number of the uh, items have already been valued for insurance purposes and such by Sotheby's. Have uh, they been valued at your instruction? No, by the donor. So you don't really know yet whether or not they're genuine? I think we're fairly certain of that. Mr. Mosserson, now you've had time to look at this collection and examine it, what's your impression of it? I'm absolutely delighted. And the more I see of it, the more charmed I am by it, the more fascinated I am by it, and the more excited I am that it's now here in Walsall. Yes, but you are probably more artistically inclined than the average Walsallite. Do you think a town like Walsall deserves such a collection? This can only be decided once the collection is on view. But my own conviction is that the people of Warsaw will respond to this collection and will really take it to their hearts. Well, the Rembrandt sketch looks a little bit faded. Aren't you worried about light damage to this one and other watercolours? Well, we are concerned, obviously. Uh, are given the best possible protection in their new home. Well, the most striking piece about this small selection is the bronze statue by Epstein. Well, of course, this is a beautiful and charming piece, but we have some 30 other sculptures, including work by Degas, Rodin, and these in turn are part of a collection of more than 400 pieces. I think it's unfair to, to single out any particular piece in such a varied and intensely personal collection can't betray at this stage. As soon as it is possible, we will let the people know who has given this magnificent collection. But as soon as it goes on display, people are going to start recognizing one or two pictures, and it won't be a secret for very long. Well, this is something that we'll have to cope with as and when it arises. Well, now, are you going to tell us the name of the donor? No, I'm not going to tell you the name of the donor. Blimey, at this library, they've got a Van Gogh, a Turner, a Picasso, a Constable, a Lancer, a Epstein, a Blake, a Goya, a Rossetti, a Rembrandt. 
Manet. a Rubens and, and a, a Matisse. Tichner. There's a Freud and a Whistler. And that's my favourite picture. The collection arrived in 1972 and it was the gift of one woman, Kathleen Garman, who lived locally and as a child used to come to Walsall to come shopping and come to church and so on. And she later went on, she left the area, went to London and um, became friends with and later married the sculptor Sir Jacob Epstein and that um, is when the collection really began and since then through their lives they collected work um, and on his death in 59 she began to expand the collection even more and then in the early 70s wanted to give it to somewhere and she thought well London's got enough uh, let's give it to the Midlands and uh, she approached Walsall and fortunately Walsall said yes and so for 20 years the collection's been here do people realise what is here? I know this is probably one of the best collections in Europe, outside of London, isn't it? Well, not enough people, and we want to start being loud about it, because it is an incredible collection, and what you're seeing now is really the beginning of a campaign to let people know what's right on their doorsteps. Why the chauffeur? Why the cleaner? Why the little girl? Because um, the collection, first and foremost, is for people in Warsaw, and uh, we want people to come in and see it. It's worth, well... It's anybody's guess what it's worth, isn't it? It's colossal money. We don't talk about money, but uh, yeah. it's, 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 you can't put a price on it. You can't yeah. put a price on it. And basically, it was the Epstein family, really, wasn't it? It was kind of Epstein and his life. That's right, and that's it. what's really special about the collection. Yes, we've got all the world-famous artists, like the Picasso and the Van Gogh and the Constable and so on. But what's even more special um, is that the whole family is represented here, and we've got not only Epstein and Kathleen Garman, we've got their children and their gran grandchildren. You've we've even got their dog, haven't we? We've got the family dog, Frisky, yeah, and that's one of the most popular things that we have here. Ethel, can I interrupt you? Yeah. This is the one that you've picked as your favourite. Yeah. Why? Well, I think it's just nice, and I, you know, I wouldn't love to do something like this. What, you'd like to be able it. to do it yourself? Oh, I would. Oh. <laughs> it's real life, ain't it? The collection of real life is open to the public at Walsall Art Gallery every day, and admission is free. As in the previous six, the National Art Collection's Fund Awards attracted applications from all over the country and from all areas of the visual arts. This film aims to give a brief introduction to the work and achievements of the ten finalists in 1993. Thanks to the work of Peter Jenkinson and his team, Walsall Museum and Art Gallery has a growing reputation for its pioneering work in creating and developing new audiences for the visual arts. It's also now known as one of the liveliest and friendliest galleries in the country. At its heart is the Garmin Ryan collection, which has been variously described as the finest personal art collection outside London, an Aladdin's cave of art treasures, and a bright light in the black country. The Garmin Ryan collection is perhaps one of Britain's least known art collections. It came here to Walsall 20 years ago as the generous gift of Kathleen Garmin, who was the widow of the sculptor Jacob Epstein. And it was formed by her and her friend and friend of Epstein, Sally Ryan, um, during the 1960s and 1970s. The collection comprises a whole range of work from prehistory through to the 1970s. You might call it an A to Z of European painting, but at the same time, what's very special about it is its very personal nature. If you'd been here a year ago, you'd have been in a very different space. It was brown, it was dusty. Um, things were hung on brown Hessian screens, in fact. And so what we've done is to redisplay the work completely and hopefully provide a more attractive environment for people coming in. There was also a high-profile campaign to relaunch the refurbished exhibition space, reflecting the gallery's aim to get away from the sombre image of art galleries and have some fun. Our policy here is to increase access to a whole range of people. That obviously includes formal education groups, schools and colleges and so on, and we've seen growth in that over the last two years, but we're also very interested in looking at particular community groups and particular needs and addressing those with the fine art collection. Walsall has a diverse temporary exhibitions programme, which provides active links between contemporary art and the permanent collection. In terms of the future, the refurbishment is just the start of a very exciting phase of development, and the work that we are going to be doing is around art and its relationship to audiences. We want to do a lot more around interpretation, we want to do a lot more about multimedia and interactive work, uh, that is to do with the future and looking into the next century and how art collections can relate to many publics that exist in Britain today. The 
Ladies Animation brings Warsaw's Garmin Ryan collection to life. It was made by Year 10 GCSE art students from Frank F. Allison Community School. The Garmin Ryan collection was given to Warsaw in 1962 by Kathleen Garmin, widow of sculptor Sir Jacob Epstein. She wanted to give a bright light to the black country. She created the collection with her friend Sally Ryan, a sculptor. They chose works that they liked, some of them by the world's most famous artists. We chose our favourite works to form this animation based on themes from the collection. Kitty by Sir Jacob Epstein. Paintings and sculpture. and family of Sir Jacob Epstein. Autumn landscape. Claude Monet. Study of Trees by Henry Jalsey Farfanis. Rock Drill. Sunflowers. Three crosses, George Rua. Birds in Flight by George Brack. Portrait of Stravinsky.
is part of Warsaw's huge art collection, most of which has been down in storage here for more than 20 years. But now it's set to get a new home because Warsaw has scooped the lottery jackpot. The people of the borough of Warsaw, 15 and three quarter million pounds of national lottery funding from the Arts Council of England for Warsaw's new art gallery. Warsaw Council Chamber has seldom seen so many smiling faces. The award is the biggest in today's lottery round. The town's current gallery is home to the Garmin Ryan collection, with works by the likes of Van Gogh and Picasso and many of the sculptor Jacob Epstein's pieces. But the other collections linger down here. There's no room to display them. The new art gallery in a new canal side location is designed to solve this problem. It'll create 60 new jobs and around 250 temporary ones during construction. Well, it's fantastic news for both Walsall and the region, and it's money that's come to the people of the borough. And we're delighted because so many people in this borough are buying lottery tickets, and this is actually a chance to get something back because it's a gallery that is really about arts for everyone. The gallery carried out a survey of local people and found that more than 85% of respondents backed the lottery bid. Local schools and colleges were enlisted to offer support. When I visited the uh, gallery last year, it was... Um all the exhibitions in there were quite good, but it was uh, a bit compacted. So with the uh, extra money, they'll hopefully be able to make it larger. Well, it's a good place to visit for sort of inspiration if you're doing your own work or just to see and look at the pictures. We obviously need to get the projects outside London too. We can't, as the Arts Council, solicit bids. Um, the regional arts boards can do that, but w we have to respond to the applications that come in. And it's wonderful when you have something like Walsall coming in. European grants and city challenge funds will help make up the rest of the new gallery's £21 million cost. It should be open by summer 1999. In the next six months, there'll be an unprecedented expansion in the number of museums and art galleries in Britain. More than a dozen will open between now and June. Most have been paid for by the National Lottery, but there are fears that not all of them will survive. Our arts correspondent Nick Hyam is at one of the flagship projects, the new art gallery in Walsall. Nick. Anna, uh, Walsall may not be the first place you'd think of for a world-class art collection, but in fact the town here owns more than 300 works by big name artists and now thanks to around 16 million pounds from the National Lottery they've got this splendid new building to house them. Walsall hopes its new gallery will offer something for local people and draw visitors as well. Inside are sculptures and drawings and paintings too by the great Jacob Epstein who died in 1959. There are pictures by Epstein's children, by living painters like Lucian Freud and by big names of the past like Van Gogh Modigliani and William Blake, all donated by Epstein's widow, Kathleen Garman, a local girl, and her friend, Sally Ryan. In the Garman Ryan collection, you see not only great works by artists such as Van Gogh and Monet and Picasso, but also quieter, more sensitive drawings and watercolours that show an aspect of uh, an artist's work that you wouldn't normally see hung in an art gallery. Walsall's not alone. London's getting ten new or extended museums and galleries between now and June. They include the Tate Modern at Bankside, a new Holocaust gallery at the Imperial War Museum, and a new wing at the Science Museum. But some in the museum world say there aren't enough visitors to go round. The new museums will end up asking the government for more money. I think it's an urgent necessity for at government level to think through the problems and face up to them before, before this queue forms around Trafalgar Square up to the door of the Department of Culture, Media and Sport. Not so, says the government. If you plan in the right way, if you market uh, in the right way to the public, if you generate a, se a sense of real excitement about what's happening, the public will come. 
back in Walsall, they're confident admission here will be free, thanks to grants from the Arts Council and the local authority. Well, the government hopes that uh, the boom in tourism generally will provide enough visitors for all these museums and galleries. In the long run, it would like national museums and galleries to be free, like Walsall is. But that's a pledge they're having difficulty de delivering on. Uh, free to children this year, free to pensioners next year. But it's going to be very expensive to make them free for the rest of us. It's a gallery designed for people of all ages, so this morning these youngsters were at last given a look in. The art gallery. The art gallery. And what's it got in it? Uh, balloons. Party. Yeah, party. Do you think it's a nice place? Yeah. Are you going to come back here again? Yeah. The so people of the borough of Walsall. 15 and three quarter million pounds of national lottery funding from the Arts Council of England for Walsall's new art gallery. It was one of the biggest arts lottery grants awarded outside London, and so work started three years ago on this side. It involved creating a new canal basin by the building, which has gone up on previously derelict land. The 120 feet high gallery is clad in pale terracotta tiles, a material used on buildings in Walsall in the Victorian era. It's deliberately set right in the heart of the shopping centre. The design has won international acclaim. Local opinions of the exterior, though, are divided. I don't think much of it at all. It's, uh, but I think it's a bad design. I like the actual style, but I mean, I know a lot of people around here don't. But I'm holding off my judgment until I've been in, seen it, looked around. But I like it. I think it'll be good for Warsaw. Well, I think the architect was a bit drunk yeah. when he done it. If it's a good building, I, I think it's impossible that immediately everybody says ah oh, it's great it's perfect I mean nobody five people can't agree about anything so why should they agree that this building is great few could disagree on the quality of the gallery's Garmin Ryan collection given to the borough of Walsall in 1973 by Kathleen Garmin the widow of the sculptor Jacob Epstein and by her friend Sally Ryan it includes works by the likes of Monet and Van Gogh its previous home at Walsall's old art gallery was simply not big enough. Part of the collection had to be left in storage. Now all 350 pieces can be displayed together for the first time. She was a lady with huge energies and really wanted to leave something uh, of quality to the people of, uh, of the West Midlands and chose Walsall as the town to, uh, to be able to place it in. And I'm sure she would have loved the new art gallery and she'd be over the moon about it. Upstairs, there's a vast space for world-class temporary exhibitions. The first, called Blue, has a Picasso on loan from the Tate under a new partnership scheme. And there's a classic Andy Warhol alongside a painting from contemporary artist Damien Hirst. But this is about art for everyone. So downstairs in the Children's Discovery Gallery, there's another Damien Hirst work with an interactive video to encourage Hirsts of the future. began with this incredible collection of paintings, ceramics and sculptures. The Garmin Ryan collection was housed above Walsall Library, but it needed a proper home. The collection was given to the borough of Walsall in 1973 by Kathleen Garmin, the widow of the sculptor Jacob Epstein. It includes paintings by Monet and Van Gogh. The new gallery enabled all 350 pieces to be viewed together for the first time. Hard to believe, just over 10 years ago, it was a hole in the ground. It was all part of the Wharf Side Regeneration Project, which, it has to be said, is still waiting completion. It involved creating a new canal basin by the building, which went up on previously derelict land. The people of the borough of Walsall, 15 and three quarter million pounds of national lottery funding from the Arts Council of England for Walsall's new art gallery. Well, they put Walsall on the map, you know, it, it moved it beyond the black country and people from all over the country came to Walsall to visit the New York Gallery.